Welcome to There's a Method to the Madness. My name is Rob Maxwell. I'm an exercise physiologist and personal trainer. I'm the owner of Maxwell's Fitness Programs. I've been in business since 1994. Today we're going to talk about just how to be a champion. Before I get into that, I want to thank our very first and greatest sponsors, Jonathan and Lynn Gilden of the Gilden Group at Realty Pros. Look, they're flat out professionals. I've said it and I will say it again. I refer to them because I know they're going to take care of you. If you have any real estate needs, commercial or residential, give them a shout. They can be reached at thegildengroup.com. So I listen to my own podcast and uh, before you think, oh boy, how narcissistic of you. I don't necessarily mean mine, although I do listen to them sometimes to see how they're coming across. But what I do mean is other podcasts. I listen to The Daily Stoic because I really enjoy Ryan Holiday and uh, the wisdom he likes to impart upon us. And I like to listen to Arnold Schwarzenegger's podcast. And uh, I just had like a little blank because I'm trying to think what he calls the thing. Uh, the Daily Pump, something like that. But it's good. I like it. He's got a positive message. He has really good writers and researchers working for him. So he gives out a lot of um, good information that I definitely approve of. He uh, has scientists working for him, which is cool. But anyway, I was listening to this morning and he was he made a, uh, a little quote that I liked. He said, you know, not everybody can be champions, but everybody can be winners. And I thought, you know, that's something I want to talk about because he put that really eloquently. I like that. And uh, I want to talk about that because as you know, and no, I'm not stealing his podcast. If you have ever listened to it, you'd know it's six minutes and it's very short. And that was just one uh, comment he made. This I'm going to now give my take on what that means to me because this is something that I talk a lot about about because there can be a lot of discouraging information out there when people are talking about only being champions. So I am going to get into that. And as you know, when you listen to the podcast, I get into the, uh, not only the exercise physiology, but the sports psychology side of things, you know, because number one, I think it is extremely important. Number two, my first degree is in psychology and uh, I find it very interesting. So that's going to be today. It's not going to be too much into physiology. So anyway, so what does that mean? What, what it means is that when people are training for something, when you're training for a sport, when you're training for a fitness competition, when you're training for a triathlon, when you're training for a 5K or a marathon or pickleball's the latest craze, right? So you're in a pickleball tournament, you're in a tennis tournament, you're in a golf tournament. So all these things are great. I mean, competition can bring out the best in us. But for some people, it can bring out the worst too. And it can bring out the worst for them. And that's what I want to talk about. So there can only be one champion, right? If you're going to say a, uh, let's just say marathon. If you're going to run a marathon and you've put a lot of energy into this, you've trained hard and you're going to a marathon, you're racing it, right? Because I've, I always tell people that, if, if you paid for registration fee and if you're wearing a number, you're racing. It's funny. A lot of times people say, well, I'm not really racing. I'm training. It's like, well, yeah, it's a little bit of self-handicap going on, self-handicapping going on right there. That's a little ego preservation going on right there. The bottom line is if you, if you pay for a number, you're racing. You may not be giving your best, but you're racing and everybody that you're racing against is viewing you as racing and that is okay. But we know when we do these things, there's only going to be one champion. Now there might be champions in the age group. We can look at it that way and say, well, if I win my age group, I'm a champion there. Of course. 
But then there's only going to be one champion in the age group. And now if I shift out of this and go a little bit to the muscle world, because I've competed in both, I've competed in bodybuilding, I've competed in weightlifting, I've competed in triathlons, I've competed in running events, I've competed in cycling events, and I've even done some open water swim events, probably more stuff. I don't know. Yeah, I was in tennis tournaments before. So I've competed. So same thing in bodybuilding. There's only going to be one champion. There's going to be an overall champion that has beaten everybody on the stage. And then they're going to break it down into weight classes instead of ages. So middleweight, lightweight, light heavyweight, um, heavyweight, uh, that's probably it. They're, nowadays, they probably have added categories. But there's only going to be one champion in each division. Uh, when I've competed, I've won my weight class before. I've finished third in my weight class before. I've finished fifth. I, you know, so... But only one of those days, I was a champion, right? I mean, I don't know. I might have won a division more than once. It's not the point. But my point is, is that on the days that I won the division, then I'm a champion. I never won an overall in a bodybuilding. So I could look back and say, well, I wasn't a, really a champion. Um, never won a triathlon overall. I've won an age group before. I did win a 5k once and it was pretty cool. Um, so I guess I could call my champion the championship there, but you know, I, I'm, you can't see my face, but I'm smiling a little bit because, and this is the whole point of this podcast that, you know, yeah, that was cool and everything. But I remember being at the start, this is, I don't know, 20 years ago, maybe a little bit longer. And uh, it was a beach race. And I looked around and I did a lot of races at this time in my life. Like I was racing all the time. I enjoyed it, I guess. I mean, as much as you can enjoy that. Um, and I looked around at the start and I'm like, I, sh- I kind of should win this. Like, unless there's like people that I don't know here that are like faster. But I looked around, I'm like, I know all these people and I usually run faster than them. So I should win this. And then I did. But what's funny is it was nowhere near my best time. You know, it was at least a minute or two minutes off my best time, not even my best time in the beach, I don't think. So the that's the whole point. So I was a champion that day. And I guess I was a winner. That, well, I know I was a winner that day because I did it. And that's what I'm trying to really make a point that not all champions are winners, Right. But every time we go out and give our best, we're winning. And we need to focus on that because if there's only going to be one champion, and I could guarantee you this, that, you know, uh, I'm not going to go show up at a 5K and be a champion now, you know. I mean, could I potentially win an age group? Sure, I guess. I mean, but, you know, that doesn't matter much to me, right? But it does matter being a winner. And... If we look at every event we do in that, instead of being a champion, instead of thinking, oh, I'm going to place today and I'm going to be among the champions. It's like, I'm not so sure that that is the best motivation to do these things. Because let's say if we're going to do a fitness competition, bodybuilding competition, which I have a client who's thinking about doing one of those and I'm sure there's people listening that have thought about it, whatever. I mean, if you train as hard as you can on every given day, because every day is a little bit different. Like some days you're going to be full of piss and vinegar, right? You're just going to have all this energy and you're going to crush it. And if you did the best you can, that's great. And then there's other days you're going to feel like shit, but you still do the best you can. You're not full of piss and vinegar, but you're still doing the best you can. That's great too. So those equal your best because you got out there and you did the best you could do at the moment. Like maybe you do a really hard set of exercise and then you say, God, I just feel like crap, you know? And then you take longer than you normally would, but then you do another set and you do it to the best of your ability. You're winning. You're winning. Okay. And then staying with this physique competition example, then On your meal plan, you stick to it. You're disciplined and you stick to it. You're winning. You're winning. And then you go to this event 
and you've been training for 10 weeks or 12 weeks, I usually recommend both. That's why I said that, depending on the condition somebody starts at. So 10 to 12 weeks, been training hard. You've been eating and following your meal plans. You've been food prepping. You've been posing in front of the mirror. You've been picking out the music you want to use. You're really giving this your best effort. And you get out there and you finish sixth out of six people. You know what? You still won, man. You still won. They're only going to crown one champion. So the other women in the age group or in your division that didn't win are also winners. They're not champions. Because... Winning can be defined in many things, giving your best effort, setting an example. Like you can be training hard, working hard, following meal preps, following your diets, posing, doing all that stuff to make yourself look as good as you can. And people are watching going, well, that's pretty cool. That's dedication. That's winning. You're setting an example, right? Now, we could look at that at losing. If you give your best, that's winning. But then you act like a total schmuck afterwards, right? Then you're not winning. If you say, well, the refs cheated me. The, the, the judges cheated me. I should say not the refs. The judges cheated me. Or, you know, you, you criticize yourself and criticize everything around you. Well, then you're not winning. And even if you took home that big trophy, you're still not winning. So there's a big difference. There's a lot of ways we win. And I know people that have been doing 5Ks and local races for a really, really long time. Like that's their gig. So now I'm going to shift over to um, the endurance side of things again, because, you know, you take yourself with you wherever you are. So like if you do one style of competition and you do your best and you win at that and then you're gracious and you set a good example and you show people around you that you're a healthier version of you, that's winning. You're going to do that when you run, do triathlons or do CrossFit or bodybuilding. So you're, you're going to act the way you act, no matter what you decide to do. You might change it a little bit based on what you're better at. I mean, that's, that's a possibility, but you're going to bring you to each competition. But now we're talking 5k, 10k. So I've known people that have never won. A race like that um, they maybe have won an age group here or there I really don't know and I don't care because they're winners because they're out there being a great example for health and fitness they're out there showing their workers their co-workers you know maybe I'm thinking of a guy now he was an administrator in schools so I mean I'm sure he won his age group here and there but he was out there all the time and he's running he's racing he's doing his best all the time so when he went to work, they're going to think he's a champion because you know, everybody knows when people run a lot, they wear the T-shirts and, and they probably talk about it. And that's OK. But they're looking at him like, wow, that's a good role model because he doesn't seem to have the risks for heart disease that some of us do. And he seems to think keep his weight in a very manageable, good weight class all the time. Like he stays in good shape. See, that's winning. That's being an example wherever you go. And you can go to some 5Ks that are big, like Matanzas and St. Augustine is a really, really, really big 5K. And they get hundreds and hundreds, if not a thousand people. And I've been to 5Ks that get over a thousand people. That's a lot of people. And they only crown one champion. One year I did the Matanzas 5K. It was only a few years ago. And... All of the winners were in the low teens for their overall times. The low teens for their overall times. I wanted to say exactly what it was, but to be honest, I forgot. And I don't want somebody to say, oh, it wasn't true. I looked up Matanzas. They were in the low teens. And the women champions were in the 15s. I mean, they get some of the best in the country to race the Matanzas 5K. I think because they get money. That's neither here nor there. And the champions I saw there, the women and men, were very gracious, very nice, very cool. And then there's the rest of us, and everybody's a winner. So if you go into that event, and it's very hard to place in an event like that, too. I mean, there's 1,000 people. For you to win your age group, you're going to have to be one of the best in your age group. And if you go into that event, and you 
do your absolute best, but let's say you come in in the middle half of your age group or even in the lower third of your age group and you did your best, you're, you're a winner. And if you go into these events thinking I'm going to be a champion, you're going to be disappointed 99 times out of 100 and probably 999 million out of a million to be the overall champion. So I want everybody to think about that. Just shift the focus right now onto being a winner instead of a champion. And you know, when you're posting your championships online, when you're doing that on social media, like you win your age group and that's all you show people, you know, I, I know the people listening to this really don't do that. And so they're probably just nodding their head in agreement, but people don't like it. They, they really, really don't. When you like put up there, oh, first again, oh, first place again, and you go on to tell like your social media following, like how great you are all the time. I just little, little personal side note to you. They're, they're not thinking you're great. I mean, most people I know kind of like mute those people. Like they're like, oh, here goes so-and-so again. Oh, here goes so-and-so again. You're not acting like a winner. You're kind of acting like a, an insecure person. So if you want to be a winner, you know, your actions will speak for you. You'll be fit, you'll be healthy, and people will ask you. You know, in uh, the 12-step programs, they have a cute little motto that I think is actually very, very true. It says, we're a program of, oh gosh, and now I'm messing it up here. Attraction versus promotion. There we go. We're a program of attraction versus promotion. In other words, they don't go out and promote it among people that are in recovery. Because what happens if they relapse? Then they make the program look bad. So instead, they focus on being a program of attraction, which means somebody might say, you know, I used to know you and you seem very different now. You used to kind of seem like you don't have your act together. Now, I get it. Most people aren't going to say this to other people. But you get the point. And now you look like you're really doing well. So what have you done different? And then they might tell them, okay, that's a program of attraction. They're not out there promoting their recovery. I do know a few people that do that. And I cringe because I'm worried for them that if they do relapse, then it's not going to be pretty. Right? So, and, and no, that doesn't hold you accountable. It's the opposite. So it's really just best to do your thing and do your thing to the best of your ability and people will ask you, they'll say, you know what? You seem really happy. You seem healthy. You seem well. You always keep your weight down. You always stay in good shape. You always have nice muscle tone, whatever. What do you do? Then tell them, but don't, don't say anything unless they ask. All right. Now let me thank overhead door of Daytona beach. Zach and Jeff Hawk are my clients, my friends, my sponsors. They're great. They're the best overhead door company in the area. And Overhead Door has been around for 100 years. But we're fortunate to have the local branch here. And Jeff has owned it for about 30 years. He took it over from great ownership. And it's just a great company. If you need to reach them, check them out at DaytonaOverheadDoor.com.